Color is one of the most powerful tools in your photographic toolkit. Take an image to the next level by controlling that color and changing the color in Photoshop. There are no more excuses for unintentional use of color. Every single color in your frame can contribute to the mood and the impact of the image. It controls the eye, and you can use Photoshop to take control of these colors. Color really is one of the most important visual weapons in our arsenal as photographers, and it can set a mood, it can achieve impact, it can direct the viewer's eye throughout the frame. Now for this challenge, you will create an image where color is absolutely essential to the impact of this image. And you can use as many colors as you want. Here, however, you will utilize Photoshop as an important tool for helping you to use color purposefully in your images. You take control of that color and you use it to reach your visual goals. If the background's the wrong color, change the color. If the dress could possibly be a different color for the mood, change the color. If you want the sky to be teal instead of blue, change it. You're the artist. Every single color in your image should be purposeful and enhance the image. If it doesn't, change it in post. Let's take a look at some of my favorite tools for controlling color in Photoshop. Did you know that there's a ton you can do to control color in Lightroom before you ever enter Photoshop? This is why I use the Adobe Creative Cloud Photography Plan, because I use both Lightroom and Photoshop in conjunction with one another to control the color in my photograph. Right now, I'm working in Adobe Lightroom CC, and I'm going to be working with a raw file in order to adjust color. Let's go over into the Develop module and scroll down to the Hue Saturation Luminance panel. Here what I can do is control how every single color works. The hue, the saturation, and luminance of each and every one of these colors. Let's say I want to change the color of the fabric in this photograph. Specifically the hue. So I'm going to click on hue. And then here I am going to grab this targeted hue adjustment. What I can do is I can click on that. And then if I drag up, it'll change the hue of that fabric in one direction. And if I drag down, it changes the hue in a completely other direction, each one giving me a completely different look to my photograph. So let's say that I'm looking for the color blue in this fabric. The next thing I can do is I can go over to saturation again, grabbing that targeted adjustment, and I can drag up to saturate that blue. I can go to luminance, click down to darken down that color. So you can see already how much control I have over all of these different elements just by working with a hue saturation luminance panel in a raw file. The next thing I'm going to do before I jump over into Photoshop is I'm going to go and make the skin tones a little bit paler. So I'm going to grab that target adjustment and I'm going to click down on the skin tone to desaturate and then go over to luminance and drag up to make it a little bit lighter. So if we take a look at before and after, you can see the massive difference that I've already achieved right here in Lightroom. I don't leave color up to chance, but instead I take control and I make those colors be exactly what I'd like them to be. So now let's open this up in Adobe Photoshop CC. I've now opened my file in Adobe Photoshop CC and here I can take so much control over the color of my photograph. I can control color in endless ways. I can use hue saturation, color balance, selective color. I can use curves. I can use blending modes. There's so many different ways that I can take control over the color of the fabric, the color of her lips, the color of her skin, the color of the fabric over her face, the color of the background. But let me show you one quick tip. I really don't like how the fabric over her eyes and face has turned a little bit green. I'd love for it to match the color of the rest of the fabric. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my swatches and use my eyedropper to select a color blue. And then I'm probably going to adjust it just to be a little bit more rich of a color blue, maybe somewhere around there. Now I'm going to create a new layer by hitting the new layer button in the layers palette. And I'm just going to draw this color over her face approximately where that discoloration is. Now obviously this looks fake, and if I just back off the opacity, it's still going to create a haze over her face. So instead what I'm going to do is change the blending mode of this layer. And blend modes change how layers interact with the layers beneath them. So I'm going to go over to my layers palette, and here's where I can change the blending modes. By default it's set to normal. 
What I want to do is scroll down to the very bottom, just above luminosity, and select color. What this is going to do is it's going to make sure what I just painted is only affecting the color of the layer beneath it. Not the lightness and darkness, not the contrast, not anything else, simply the color. So this is going to be a quick and easy way to control color in my photograph. And now I could go ahead and change the color of her lips in a similar manner. Or bring color out in the background, perhaps by painting a bit of blue on the background. This is just one starting point and one tool that is going to help me take control of color in both Lightroom and now in Photoshop. But let's take a look, once I've retouched this, once I've taken control of the color, what I ended up with. Now we're back in Adobe Lightroom CC and I wanted to share the progression of the color control that I had with this image. First what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the shortcut L to dim the lights in Lightroom and then L again to darken, to turn off the light so I can view these images against black. Now on the left hand side you're going to see the original image before color control but I didn't like that color of fabric. I wanted it to be richer, I wanted it to be blue. So the image in the center is what I was able to achieve right here in Lightroom in the Hue Saturation Luminance panel. And then on the right hand side is the final image with the finishing touches that were achieved in Photoshop. This is the image that I'm going to want to share with the world. And speaking of sharing with the world, Lightroom actually integrates with several different options to publish your images online. And one of these objects is a social network called Behance, and Behance is a creative community of artists. The exchange ideas and it's also a great place for networking. Now if I go over into the left hand side of the library module, under publish services, you can see where Behance is listed and if I right click there and click on edit settings, I can control exactly the file type and quality as well as watermark that is going to appear on this image when it's uploaded to Behance and I can save these changes. When I'm ready I can select that final photograph, click and drag it into the synchronized folder here called Works in Progress. When I'm ready, I can publish now. Now let's pop over to my Behance profile. When I do so, you can see that file has already uploaded and it's in my Works in Progress folder, but I can easily move it and share it to other projects. What's great is this is yet another way that Adobe and Lightroom allow you to be part of a creative community and to get your images out there, to get out there, to stay out there, to share your work.